So that sort we're not seeing the sort of play we're expecting from the Super Eagles. We're not seeing the sort of performance that a champion team should put out. But a lot of Nigerians say, hey, it's all about getting results. But then Nigeria is going to play good football. We want to see. Let's take the Super Eagles quickly and talk about um, the Nigerian Professional Football League. It's all over now. We told you it's no news. Caterpillars are the winners of um, this season's Nigerian Professional Football League. But then we saw some interesting results from match day. 38 in front of Udo Tyro is this current. Oh my goodness. 23 goals now. That's oh. incredible in any league around the world. So thumbs up to Unform Udo. He got two goals uh, for Aimba in that dead rubber game against the uh, Canopillas. Canopillas are champions already, like we all know. And those are the other results uh, mm. uh, right there, Austin. I want a result for Bayelsa United. Uh, defeated Atlanta by two goals to one crown. Defeated Aqua United by three goals to nothing. But that will not come because crown. And they've already been relegated. Sharks lost to FC Taraba. New boys doing big things at the fire on the final day. Gonna be United defeated Abi Awaras by four goals to one. That's why United and we will share the spores in a two out draw. And then Kaduna United lost to Rangers International. Can I be defeated Social Science by three goals to nothing? Nembe still struggling. Fell to Giwa by four goals to nothing. Aimba showed that even if we don't win the, yeah. the, the, the league title, whatever it takes to be the champion. Definitely. And they showed it yes. in, uh, in good style. Defeating Canopillas by three goals to one, and then Lobby Stars lost, uh, defeated Dolphins of Portacot by a single goal. We have seen um, the winner of um, the league, the teams that will not play in the Nigerian Professional Football League next season, Crown of C, Nembe City, Kaduna United, uh, sadly, Gombe United, they've uh, said goodbye to our top flight football, talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League. And then we told you that um, the top three, Caterpillars, Aimba, and then Worry Wolves. That's it on your screen. Caterpillars ending the season with 65 points. But look at that. What a race it was. Yeah, very close. Uh, very close uh, between the top three right there. But then uh, I think uh, nobody will argue against the fact that Caterpillars are well um, uh, deserved and champions. Um, and the implication of this now is Caterpillars and Aimba will represent Nigeria in the CAF Champions League, while Worry Wolves will represent Nigeria in the Confederations Cup. Calf Confederations Cup. Yeah. Mm. So that's it. Um, let's talk about the teams that will be joining. We told you that was the team bottom four. Uh, they've said goodbye to the um, Nigeria Professional Football League. But good news for fans of shooting stars. And uh, they're coming back to the Nigeria Professional Football League. Um, and also coming back, Gabros United, Wiki Tories, and then Ranchers Bees of Kaduna. So Kaduna United leaving, Ranchers Bees coming back. Yeah. Good one. Yeah, good one, definitely. I'll, I'll talk about shooting stars right here. We all know the tradition <laughs> yeah. uh, of the team uh, in the, the country. Mickey yeah, so hopefully this time around they're able to maintain their status in, in, in the league for a longer uh, time. They've been coming and going and coming mm. and going. It's not good enough for the image. Mm. So this time around, I hope the management puts everything in place uh, to ensure uh, shooting stars of Ibadan remain in the Premier League. So that's it. Um, enough of football. You've seen it. Our teams that have dropped, the teams that are coming back into the top flight football of the Nigeria Professional Football League. So much to talk about. And let's go on this quick break now. The 17,000 capacity um, seats at the O2 Arena was filled up. You wouldn't expect anything else when it's over Djokovic taking on Roger Federer. But the moments before the game started, Roger Federer came out saying, guys, I'm sorry, I can't play due to a back injury. Let's listen to reactions coming out of that. I will come back. We'll let you know the other match that has been abandoned in the final game, talking about tennis. We'll be back. Stay with us. Yeah, I mean, there's a few things, you know, like you, your goal for the beginning of the season is to qualify for the World Tour Finals. And when you say that, I guess the dream is to hold up the trophy or to be in the finals and get a shot at it. And that's exactly in the situation I'm in after an unbelievable match with uh, Stan Wawrinka uh, late last night, saving four match points. That's how you want to make it to your finals and, you know, look forward to it. And then there's this big disappointment not being able to compete. You think of the fans, they must be disappointed. That's why I also wanted to go out and, you know, confront them and tell them that I'm very sorry and I tried everything I possibly could to get ready. But that's sports, you know, when you're not feeling well and you're not at 100% uh, at a certain level, yeah, there's just no reason to compete, especially if you're taking uh, more risk uh, and making it maybe even worse in the process. Uh, I, I'm sure that Roger would come out on the court if. Uh 
if he could play uh, at the level he desired and uh, I wish him a uh, speedy recovery and hopefully can he can play in Davis Cup final. I know it's a very important event for him uh, next weekend and you know uh, first time in the history that this happens in the World Tour finals no, the match not to be played at all and uh, I, I feel it's a shame. I feel sorry for, for all the people who came out and, and hope they could see the match. Looking at your personal achievement, I mean That's it. In the words of Novak Djokovic, it's a big shame. But hey, what can we do? It's part of it. A setback are happening in sports. Roger Federer says he's sorry. Djokovic says he knows that Federer would have played if he was um, feeling all right. So I think that that's fair play right there. Yeah, but I have to say that was very disappointing. Um, a lot of tennis fans really uh, were looking forward to that um, um, potential classic. But it wasn't meant to be. Uh, sometimes as a, as a professional, you have to understand that um, your health really matters mm. uh, sometimes. I can imagine if it was a Rafael Nadal, mm. uh, nothing, nothing was going to stop, stop him from playing in the final. But then uh, Roger, Roger Federer is, is, is different now. He's getting on in age. And uh, you can understand if he wants to prepare uh, for next season instead of aggravating uh, the back injury he suffered in that semifinals against uh, Vavrinka. So that's it. Uh, but then we told you uh, before we went on that breakdown. Uh, it's not just uh, Roger Federer that is letting go of a game. Work of us in tennis are more common than in almost any other major sport. So that's because um, it requires a lot of pressure. You know, it's a very tense game. Oh, so when they can't go and imagine it was more like a marathon in that, in that game against Vavrinka. Yes. So maybe that was in his, his, his back in yeah, there. Definitely. Um, tennis is a very, uh, is a very tough um, sport. You're all there by yourself. And uh, no, you don't have any teammates actually cover your, your behind. So when you get injured most of the time, it, it's very blurring and uh, people can see it. Uh, so that's why I said earlier, I understand why Federer didn't risk um, playing in the final because it would have been one Decided, and it could have ended up actually aggravating the injury again. So uh, we just wish him for a speedy recovery. But for Djokovic, make no mistake about it, he's been the best player uh, through the year. Mm -hmm. Deservedly world number one. He's won seven titles. And he, he, I, there's nothing to say. He wouldn't have gone into the future and Federer in this finals. Um, but sadly, we'll never know. But congrats to Djokovic again. You can just go on and go on and be a nursing uh, father now as a baby uh, that just came about uh, a couple of weeks ago. So yep. it's been a very good year for um, mm -hmm. Djokovic, definitely. Let's let you know that um, um, Maurizmo um, was leading 6-1-2-0 when Justin Allen approached the next to tell the umpire that she cannot continue due to uh, a stomach pain, uh, so she had to forfeit. Maurizmo also uh, defeated Kim Clijstad in the semi-final on the World over when her opponent badly twisted her ankle during the third set, uh, talking about um, games that have also been abandoned. And that was at the Australian Open in 2006. So let's leave tennis yeah. now. Quickly talk boxing. This guy, uh, Klitschko, <laughs> who can put him down? I don't know. Um, that's a very uh, tough um, question. I can't really answer. If you just look at the overall division at the moment, mm. you really can't point at anybody uh, that can do uh, the number on uh, Vladimir Klitschko. It's been incredible. Uh, this fight uh, was really a no contest again. Uh, mm. uh, to think that Pulova was actually undefeated um, before this fight, and the way um, Klitschko took him out was very impressive. 17 times now he's defended his title. <laughs> Nobody can beat mm. him. And I think I can answer your question. The only <laughs> person that can actually beat him is probably Vitaly Klitschko. But Vitaly <laughs> and uh, Vladimir will not fight each other. Uh, the mother, their mother didn't sanction that fight, so it's not going to happen. Mm. Um, uh, Vitaly right now, the last thing on his mind is um, boxing. He is the mayor of Kiev now, so he's not really thinking about boxing. And mm. it's, it, I wouldn't say it's a shame, but that's the way it goes. This guy we will dominate uh, for a long time. He's 38 years old, but showing no signs of slowing down oh, at all. Incredible, incredible Vladimir Klitschko. They're beating every opponent that comes his way. That, that's it. That's how much we can take on yeah. this edition of sports this morning on channels, television. But remember, it's a tradition. We won't stop talking when we leave the studio. You can follow us on Twitter, our channels underscore sports. We have loads of comments coming up on, on Facebook. We have a thread there that says, can the Super Eagles qualify for the 2015 African Cup of Nations? And 80% of Nigeria says, yes, they can. If 
they repeat what they did in points. Now, I totally agree. So that's it. That's where the cutting falls on behalf of the ever dedicated sports team at Channels Television Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. But it is Austin Okonakpa. We'll be back again tomorrow to talk some more sports. But until then, in everything you do, remember to keep talking sports. Bye for now.